Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 6 of Combat Officer Guides. This video is going to be the map tactics version of the Tier 8 Strongholds Guide, and if you've already seen my Tier 6 skirmish map tactics, then you know how it's going to work. It's not going to be very fun, but hopefully it'll give you all the information that you need to be able to have at least a semblance of a call for each specific map. If you are looking for a very specific map, please skip to that particular section, because again, this is not going to be particularly exciting. If you are just trying to get an overall idea of all the different maps, then feel free to watch the entire video. Just be aware that you might lose your sanity somewhere along the way. This is the lineup that I will be using for this video. If you want an explanation of my overall thought process or why I've picked this lineup or anything like that, please watch the episode prior to this one where I go over the basic overview for Tier 8 Strongholds. And without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so just like at Tier 6, the first map that we're going to be talking about is Abbey from the south side. Now, Abbey is fairly complicated in that there's a lot of different things that you can do. This is typically how I would start off my lineup, and then I would change it depending on what the enemy has. If the enemy has more heavy tanks than me, I would keep the one line passive over here. I would have the EBR check this side fairly aggressively, especially if they have a lot of heavies, I would send the EBR fairly aggressively to see if their heavies are coming down this line. And if they're not, I would take Barasks all the way up. I wouldn't push in with the Progettos. I don't like to do that just because the tank destroyers are able to suppress really, really easily. Um, and then I would just hold here on the one line with the heavy tanks. If they decide to push the one-two line, which is what teams like to do with heavy tanks, then your heavy tanks here can suppress it very, very easily. However, if the enemy team decides to take mid with the heavy tanks, which is usually what the better teams do because mid is very flexible. If the enemy team rushes mid, then your ship poke from here can farm into them. I would leave some of your tanks back here and then send whatever you need to to win this line. If you can win it with one, then send one. If you can win it with two, then send two. If you need all three, uh, it's probably not worth going up there if you need all three. Um, the Brasks can take aggressively up this line or they can go back if the enemy team decides to rush mid. Uh, and that's about it. If the enemy team brings a lot of fast tanks, they're almost always going to go mid. If they do that, then I would just make sure that... Honestly, if the enemy team has a lot of fast tanks, it's almost better to stick a couple heavies down there and then have extra heavies up here. Again, it's really your call. I can't tell you every single situation, but the basic lineup for the beginning should look something like this. All right, north side on this map is way easier to call. Um, you should try to take mid if you can. If you can at all, you should try to take mid. This guy should be over here. Um, if you can take mid, you should take mid. The reason for that is because unlike the south side, once you take mid from the north, there's not really any way for the enemy team to punish you without pushing through mid. Uh, from the south side, if you were to take mid aggressively, then you can make a climb up this little ramp here, which would completely counter mid if they have enough tanks to do so. So better to take it from, south, uh, from north aggressively than to take it from south aggressively. Once you have this spot, it's your call with the heavy tanks. Again, if you think you can win this line with your heavy tanks, go ahead and win it. If you don't think you can, then just hang out back there, have your Barasks farm from the mid. BBR is there to check out if anything is playing aggressively on the eight line. If they are, then the Barasks can start countering it. If you need to, you can bring your ship poke back here. Uh, you can have a heavy tank look over that way from there. If your ship poke's not gonna be able to hold off whatever they have over here, then you could take over here with the ship poke, have one or two tanks sitting back here, and then have the rest taken to here. Really, if they're playing the eight line with that many tanks, though, you would be able to take over midline pretty easily. And from that point, you have control of the entire map. Um, the real threat for the North push is really not much of anything. The enemy team has to do everything fairly well. And these starting positions should help you counter whatever it is they try to do. Alrighty, now we're going to look at airfield first from the west side of the map. And before I go anywhere, I just want to say, fuck this map. This map is stupid. Now that that's out of the way. <laughs> Let's start talking about how to win on airfield. First things first, very important, is that if you are able to take up the hill with a Barask, this is true for both sides, if the Barask, if any of your fast tanks spawn on the north side of this area here, then what you want to do is make sure that at least one of them takes up this hill. You can do it with two. I like doing it with at least one. Um, your heavy tanks don't have to be exactly in these positions, but you should have at least one up against this wall here. That is to counter anything that tries to play aggressively from the north side here. You can shoot into it while side scraping. If they try to play below you, like here, then you should have one mid with your medium tanks to shoot down into that. Um, the Progetto out here 
its job is to shoot at anything that tries to push out this way. I would instruct the Progetto player that plays up here to wait until the enemy tank that wants to push this side is committed before firing an entire clip into them, just so you can get the maximum punishment for it. If need be, if they do it with too many tanks so that the Progetto can't do enough damage to make it worth it, you can bring the ship boat over to it. The Progetto at base is to counter anything that plays south. It's very rare that they push aggressively south. If they push aggressively south with the amount of tanks that is needed to win aggressively south, just fucking take north. Send the heavy tanks up the hill if you want to. Send this tank. Like, you can go cap their base from north easily. If you don't want to do that, bring your heavy tanks over to here. From here, you can farm anything that pushes south. Don't push south. It's a terrible idea. This map is really badly designed. The only way that you can win this map is by winning the north side and then moving through. While you win the north side, you control everything else. So your heavy tanks are just playing, su uh, playing suppression until you can guarantee the win on the north side. The Barask here is the one that's going to be doing all the damage for the beginning. The guys in the midline should just be out trading whatever is on their team over there. Again, it, this is a stupid map, um, but this is the easiest way to go about winning it. And from the other side of the map, a little bit different. I keep forgetting to move the last little few tanks. Um, the other side of the map, a little bit different. Your ship poke should be covering the south side here. This position is very good because not only can you cover the south side, but as soon as they start looking like they're over pushing north, you just bring them back to this corner here and you can farm into this. This Barask is just your reserve tank. You can send it wherever the fuck you want to. It doesn't matter. Again, you should be trying to take this hill if you can with an aggressive fast tank. Your Skodas and 703 should just be playing the heavy tank fight typically as you would in a random battle from here. Very important that you don't push early. You're going to lose if you push early. The EBR is up here just to spot anything going on the outside. He doesn't really need to fucking do anything. He doesn't even need to be here if you don't want him to be. You could just send a Barask up here. You can have the EBR play the midline over here and get an aggressive spot. It doesn't matter. This map is, again, tier 8. It's very flexible. You can do a little bit of whatever you want. What you want to do is usually win the south side first, and then once you win the south side, then you can start pressuring into the north. If you see that you have an advantage north, then win north. Once you've defeated south side, usually it's as simple as pulling back and repushing north. This spot here is the biggest danger. If you're able to push up to this spot here with your heavy tanks and then fire in onto the tanks that are on the hill, that is really useful. If the enemy team camps, which is a terrible idea, don't camp on this map. But if the enemy team does camp on this map, because I've seen some teams do that, all you do is you take one, eh, probably just one tank up that hill. You don't really want them to do anything until they have free shots, because if they try to spot from here, they're going to get spotted in return. Your EBR can keep playing this area. You can keep a Progetto over here. You take your Barasks aggressively up the one, the uh, C line so that you can take their corner away from them. You have your heavy tanks play support fire. You don't really want to push in all at once. As soon as you take this corner, from there, you should be able to spot anything that they have camping. You have tier of view range. You should be able to spot really easily. And from there, you should win. Um, pretty much take corner, make sure that everybody else has support fire from the sides, and then pick them off one bit by bit. Because if you've taken corner from them, they can't win. The only way that they can try to hold corner is if they have, like, heavy tanks here. I've seen some teams do that, ignore the fact that they are called EBR. If enemy tanks are in that area here, all you do is you go straight up this way. And then from this spot here, you can shoot straight into them. Uh, you can also suppress them from the corner here, so pressuring them from the top, as well as pressuring them from below. Uh, if that still doesn't work for some fucking reason, send some tanks this way. If you go from this angle here, it's less likely for you to get punished by anything here, especially when you have tanks up here. And that is airfield. Ooh, now we're on cliff. This is a fun one. So, from cliff, a lot of teams go donut. I say that it's a terrible idea at tier 6. At tier 8, it's viable. I still would not do it consistently, but it is viable to go up Donut at tier 8. I still stand by my idea that Hill still wins this map, so I try to put a little bit more priority on Hill. I will try to take Hill with a single EBR. If I don't think a single EBR will be able to take Hill by itself, for example, if the enemy team has extra light tanks, or if my EBR player is not good enough, or don't tell him he's not good enough, but if you know he's a little iffy, then you can send your Barasks up with him. If the enemy team goes Donut, all you have to do is take in cover positions with your heavy tanks. You're not going to be able to cross with all of your heavy tanks on full health, so just cross as far as you can towards the middle with your heavy tanks. The Progettos and things will play in the ridge lines, yada yada. Uh, the Barasks I put over here because if they don't have a job such as taking hill, 
you can send them up the zero line aggressively and take out anything they have on this side of the map. The shit poke always, 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 always put your tank destroyer back here. It is a very obvious spot. The enemy team, if they're smart, is going to blind fire it. Why is it a super obvious spot and why are people blind fire it? Because it's good. This is the best tank destroyer spot on this map. Anybody else who says anything else to you is lying to you. That is the best tank destroyer spot. It is so fucking important to take that spot. Once you are there, that can suppress anything that tries to overpush into your projectiles and things. These guys just have to play smart in the rocks and then shoot against anything that's on the other side. If they somehow cross with heavy tanks without you punishing them, then you can bring your projectiles back and have your heavy tanks go forwards. If you are seeing tanks, if you are seeing that the enemy team has enough tanks to win the donut here and completely obliterate anything you have here without being able to cross. So for example, if the enemy team is full medium tanks, then you can start justifying bringing some heavy tanks over here. If you do that, if you play to win Donut, then all you have to do is, with the rest of the map, you have to play more passively. The Progettos can hang out back here. The Progettos can even go Donut if you want to. The Barasks can cross aggressively Donut from the top side if you want to win Donut. Again, I don't like winning Donut. I don't think you can go anywhere once you win Donut. Uh, if you do go Donut and the enemy team goes Donut, then the fight's just in Donut, and that's all it is. I prefer playing above. I think it's more fun. Um, I also think it's a little bit easier to flex around. At tier 10, it gets more complicated, but we're not at tier 10. So for now, I don't like going donut. Do what I originally said. Bring the heavies up here. If you can cross all the way with the heavies, cross all the way with the heavies. All right, so now we're on the north side and guess what? It's the exact same thing. Well, I'm not creative. The ABR is gonna go hill. The Barasks are gonna go up the nine line unless you need them to be able to win hill. The medium tanks and the heavy tanks should try their best to get into the mid. If the enemy team takes down it aggressively and can farm you as you cross into mid, then don't let them farm you. Play behind the rocks and things. If they've taken that many tanks towards the donut, then they're not going to have that many tanks over into the field, which means it's not that important to take the ridge line with anything besides Progettos. Your Progettos should be able to cross for free. The Progettos can farm into anything that they have here. If they have a tank destroyer back here, blind fire the hell out of it with EBR on hill, blind fire with the Barasks in the corner here. You should be able to kill it with enough blind fire. Um, if not, then this becomes another one of the shootouts. You can flex depending on as you see, uh, what you see as an opening. If you want to take Donut, it would be the exact same thing. You would send your heavy tanks to Donut. You would have your medium tanks go with them if you think necessary. Otherwise, you can play your Brigittos up here. You would have the Barasks go from above like this, so that you can take some different angles into Donut. And the ship poke should always, 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 always be on the back hill ridge because it's the best spot in the game and that is cliff all right welcome to el haloof which is going to be one of the more complicated ones um if you have the heavy tanks for it i like sending the heavy tanks up to the north and on the ridge line if you have enough tanks to win north then this is probably what i would do as your starting setup. I would have the Barasks in reserve. You can even send them north if you really want to. If you really, really, really want to full commit north, you can send your Barasks all the way to the corner here. You can even send them up here to lock down everything fully if you plan on taking this dip aggressively. It would probably be with the Progenitos that you would take the dip aggressively. Some good teams that have good enough coordination will do this. It is very difficult to do this because you have to kill anything that tries to push out to A1 as well as play below the ridge and suppress anything that tries to play on top. This is a very, very fast strat if you wanted to do this. What I usually do is I have my Barasks play reserve at base. I don't commit dip unless I need to, and then I clip across with the Brigittos, and then I can rotate them wherever I need to. I don't like sending the EBR or the light tank to here. Reason for this is they're easily caught out, especially if the enemy team tries to take into the uh, dip right here. If the enemy team takes into this, then this spot is dead. What I prefer doing is playing the EBR either here so that it can spot for the ship poke, or it can play over here so that it can spot the crossing here. You just have enough of your range to spot this crossing. And it's far, far safer than going all the way into this little area here. Now, if you don't think you can win north because the enemy team brought a shit ton of heavy tanks, or because you don't have faith in yourself or whatever, there is a bait strat you can play on this map that is pretty sneaky. What you can do is you send your heavy tanks and just your heavy tanks up to the north there. You have your ship poke or whatever tank destroyer you have playing right here. This tank farms into whatever pushes the 703 while the rest of the medium tanks play on the base ridge. If they play to play aggressively against your Skodas here, if you back your mediums up to around this area here, you can shoot from here into this top ridge here. Uh, I think I explained this strat at tier 6 as well. If you wanted to do this, it does technically work. It is easier to just win north 
with the tanks you have, and then have your ship poke farm into the mid to support the EBR. Uh, last little bit I'm going to be talking about on this map, besides covering the other side of the map, is that if the enemy team is camping, um, at tier 8, this is probably the hardest camp in the game to break. It is extraordinarily difficult. Um, you have to play far better than the enemy team does in order to break this camp, if they are camping correctly. If they're camping incorrectly, then it's fairly easy. Um, but if they are camping correctly, it is very difficult. I will explain to you the spots that you should avoid, but I can't give you a foolproof way to win this camp. You're going to have to see where the enemy weak spot is. So, for this camp, what you should do is you should take these two spots here first. Anything that's back here should die. Uh, anything that plays in this area should die quickly. And then you take into the, this spot here with some turreted tanks, and then you start playing in this area against anything here. They're going to have tanks here. This is the spot that you should probably artillery, um, hit with an arty strike. Once you take that spot here, you should not play this area, because from this area you can get shot down on by these guys. The most effective way to break this camp is to find which spot that they're camping that is the weakest spot that they're camping. So, for example, people will put their tanks here, they'll put their tanks here, and they'll put a couple tanks here. And here, and here and here. Those are the spots that they have that they're going to be taking. There are two spots that you really care about with breaking this camp. One is this spot here. The other one is this corner here. If they don't have enough tanks in the corner and they have more stuff down here, then you send all of your tanks across and you take corner and then you play from corner. If they have more stuff in the corner and not enough stuff down south here, then you take this south spot first and then you fight to take over the corner. If they're camping correctly and they're evenly distributed, then good fucking luck, you're gonna have to outskill them. But if they messed up and they have less tanks in one of those two spots, then you commit to the other spot. From the other side of the map, it's pretty much the same thing. You have your heavy tanks uh, that have gun depression playing on the top, you have your heavy tank that doesn't have gun depression playing on the bottom, your Progetto should be there fast enough to clip anything that they send that's slow trying to cross. Your Barasks, I like to keep my Barasks here for the beginning, just because if the EBR spots anything taking a shortcut through here, your Barasks can clip whatever goes together. If you want to, you can take aggressively corner with the Barasks. The shit poke is back here just in case they try to push anything up this way. It's your alarm as well as shooting anything that goes down that way. It can shoot across after anything that goes after the EBR. Pretty flexible uh, strat. You can rotate as need be. If you think you can win north easily, then play full north. Again, it's tier 8. There's a limited amount of things I can just explain to you without taking all day. Alright, so Ghost Town. Funny enough, Ghost Town's probably the easiest map to call um, at tier 8. I don't really change this loadout at all. And I do the same thing on both sides. So, I have Barask sitting in the corner here. I have the EBR playing in the bushes here. If they have a tank that's going to be outspotting the EBR, don't bother sending it over this way. It's not that important to take map control over this. Because you have Barasks back here to punish anything that tries to flank, you can even send the EBR passive here. I wouldn't really do that. Uh, let your EBR player decide what they want to do. It's usually what I do on this map. The heavy tanks play back here. It's important that your heavy tanks don't commit to the corner here, especially if the enemy team has more heavy tanks. But primarily because even if the enemy team doesn't have more heavy tanks, that means that they're going to have some medium tanks that they could spare. And if they get rushed, if the heavies get rushed while they're all the way up here, you're not going to be able to save them, and you're going to lose three heavy tanks for pretty much free. Other than that, the ship poke covers anything that tries to push down the one line. It can also turn around and focus anything that tries to push down the 9-0 line. The Barasks are really useful here because they can shoot anything that tries to push up the 9-0 line, and if they cannot kill it, then the heavy tanks can farm across. Usually on this map, teams will not worry about taking mid, because mid is stupid. What they'll do is they'll take the one line or they'll take the 9-0 line. The Barasks counter the 9-0 line because who the hell would camp with Barasks? Anybody who's an only idiots would camp with Barasks. Thankfully, I'm an idiot, so therefore people don't expect that we bring Barasks to the corner here. Ship Poke is going to be playing on this ridge here. It farms anything that tries to kill, uh, that tries to play in this area. It farms into the city if they try to play through the middle of the city. Heavy tanks here can play aggressively through the 6-7 line if you see an opening. This is usually the spot that I like to push first. If that is not viable, I, I cannot push the 6-7 line, then I would bring the Barasks all the way over and we would push up the 1-2 line. I like to push without rotating the Barasks, if at all possible, but if need be, I would rotate the Barasks up the 1-2 line. Never push the 9-0 line unless you're absolutely out of other options. The 9-0 line's really, really not safe. 
I heavily prefer either taking aggressively into city as far as I can and then playing in the farthest area I can without dying. Or more often, what is going to happen is I play all the way up the one line like this and then I spot the TD back here with the EBR or I send the medium tanks fast enough so that they cannot kill me before I take out whatever tank destroyer they have back here or whatever they have on the hill. And that is it. Surprise! It's the same thing. Uh, I don't really have to explain it. The rotations are almost exactly the same. The EBR placement's almost exactly the same wherever the fuck you want. Heavy tanks are almost exactly the same. If the enemy team has a shit ton of heavy tanks to the point where you're scared for your heavy tanks lives, bring them back to here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and that's it. That that's, that's Ghost Town. I hate this map in randoms, but in Strongholds it's actually quite fun. So Highway is a fairly new map, and I think it's because of this that people don't really know what they're doing on Highway. I legioed for a lot of teams that really have no fucking clue what they are doing on Highway. Um, my typical way of handling Strongholds with Highway is that whoever wins at the corner here first wins. That is usually what happens. There are other ways to win without winning the corner, but it is usually the easiest way to win, is by taking corner. Um, that is why I send all of my mediums over there, because once the mediums get here, if they send anything over here, which they're going to have to cross over this giant open area to send anything over here, which is what smart people will do, they'll try to take corner. But once they send tanks across the middle of the open here, you can obliterate them, and then you go wherever you want. You kill whatever they send to corner for free. Unless they're like 10 medium tanks that you cannot physically kill with your five. Every, almost every single lineup, you can kill whatever they send to the corner for free. If they didn't go corner and they decided to go city for some reason, your EBR will tell you. It'll spot aggressively through city. It will be anything that they try to send over here. Um, once it spots whatever's over here, and by the way, you should send them through the actual city itself, not through the bush line here, because if they play through the bush line, then they're going to have to run through a bunch of open field to get away. Once they spot anything over there, if it's their entire team, then you could push across like this with your medium tanks and win over this way. If it's not enough for you to push across like that, then you can bring your heavy tanks back to around these areas here and hold them. And then you inch your way across. You bring your EBR back, you take out anything that's in the field here, you play your EBR through the field, and then you kill anything that's over on the ridge line, and then you push across. Again, corner is very important. Oh, by the way, the ship book's just supporting. Again, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, this map is fairly simple. Whatever wins the north corner has control over most of the map, uh, primarily the north field, which is most of the map, because that's most of the playable map. Um, the city really doesn't matter, because once you win city, where the fuck are you gonna go, right? Like, you could push across like this, and I'll show you from a second, uh, from the other side, why pushing city from south is a bad idea. Now, let's say that the enemy team from South Spawn pushed City against your loadout like this. Your Skodas are very, very easily able to suppress whatever tanks try to push them. They will kill probably two tanks at minimum before they die, especially because they have a 7032 with them, and especially because a ship poke can just go over to here and then shoot at anything that pushes over them on the ridge. Um, they will take forever doing that. While they're doing that, your tanks that you played aggressively into the corner like this can very easily take all the way down the one line and win the map. Let's say the enemy team tries to aggressively play up the one line. Well, first of all, you should have sent your mediums up there. If your mediums are good players and you have the decent amount of mediums that you need in order to win the corner, you should be able to kill anything that they send corner. Once you win corner, then you can start playing passively in these areas here. If they try to push you, then your ship poke from here would be able to help. If they have their entire fucking team over the, in the one line, then you can bring your heavy tanks back to shoot into them. If they don't have their entire team in the one line, then you could send your tanks, uh, the, your heavy tanks through the city and win the city. And that way you have entire map control and then you just start putting the squeeze on whatever they have in the corner. Again, North Corner usually wins this map. All right, and now for my absolute favorite map, which is Himmelsdorf. On Himmelsdorf, I send one heavy tank to this corner here. This heavy tank can spot anything that tries to push up the three line. As far as the two line goes, you have an EBR able to spot that. If you don't want to spend the EBR over there, then you can have your ship poke permanently poking this way. The ship poke can be looking either direction, either up the three line or over on this line down this way. The 7032 is by itself over here. You might be thinking, oh, indoor's an idiot. Uh, it's just leaving a single heavy tank to cover the eight line. Here's the thing. 7032 is fucking invincible. Why do I keep cursing today? If this 7032 is side scraping correctly and only showing its turret and its angled side, nothing is going to pen it. 
if there are enough tanks that are able to push the 7032 down the line, then the 7032 can just back off to here, and then you have Skoda's farming into this. And if they have enough tanks to do that, then you're going to already have one hill with all of your mediums that you sent up the hill. And then the mediums from here could shoot down into it from here. They could shoot down into it from here if they try to push after the 7032. There are so many options that you can use on Himmelsdorf. I love Himmelsdorf. Um, but yeah, if you have enough mediums for it, you should try to take hill. If you are not able to win hill, then you just leave hill because you're fast enough to do so with your fast mediums. And you shouldn't have sent them there if their entire enemy team is mediums because then you might die right off the bat. But if you have the possibility to win hill, you try to take hill. If they send heavy tanks up there for some reason, because that's literally the only way that you would be countered here if you sent your mediums up here against a winnable fight, then you would just leave with your mediums and then you'd go somewhere else, usually up the one line, and then you'd just play all the way through. If they go full hill, then just take below literally everywhere and then start capping from right here. And then as long as you have suppressing fire from everywhere else, then you still win. This map is very easily winnable as long as you take map control and rotate effectively. Other side of the map, pretty damn identical. EBR spots up the 1-2, Skoda suppressing mid, Skoda suppressing down the 3 line. 7032 suppressing the uh, the 8 line here. It's better to just play back here, because if you play up here, then that's only if you're going to be pushing, and there's no reason to push with only one tank. Take hill aggressively. As soon as you take hill, then you play the rest of the map to uh, to win the rest of the map. If the ship poke doesn't have a job, you can send the ship poke through the building to here. You could also send the ship poke all the way to the corner. Just keep in mind that you don't have too many tanks over here, so you have to be able to rotate out if need be. And usually I'll just leave the ship poke right here so that it's out of view range of anything. And that is it. All right, let's talk about Corellia. Corellia is a fun one. Um, and it looks like I'm an idiot with this setup. So hopefully I'll be able to justify why this call isn't a bad idea. So we should be from the north side. So from the north side, most of the time, the enemy team will take the bottom hill. Uh, both teams go for the bottom hill. This strat is very similar to my tier 6 strat in that I don't like trying to take bottom hill unless I see that I have a very obvious advantage going bottom hill. Instead, I want to focus on doing damage for them taking the hill. So what I do is I send my fast tanks, in this case it's going to be Barasks, down to the south. They will shoot anything that pushes up the hill, and then most of the time I'll let these Barasks leave. They'll go all the way around to another side of the map. The heavy tanks need to be playing back here. This is because if the heavy tanks play up here, then all they're gonna do is die to whatever pushes around this corner. If you play back here, then they will take a little bit longer to die. This TD here is a little bit optional. You can either keep him back here, which is high risk for them. They'll be able to do damage early, but then eventually they'll either get artied or they'll die when they push up this side. You could also leave him back here so that it survives for a little bit longer. This is the safer option. Um, if you want to play slower for whatever reason. Uh, especially if you think that they're going to push south no matter what. The EBR is sitting passive in mid. This is so that you can spot anything that pushes the outside of the hill. As far as the Barasks go after their original job, I usually send them up north to join the Progettos. The Progettos are split up like this from the beginning, just in case the enemy team sends a large team up north. They'll be able to escape with at least two out of the three, preferably all three Progettos can escape. Um, and then the Barasks will be in a position to support them. If they do not get pushed from back here, then you just send the Barasks up with them and they push this side. As soon as they push off of the hill and try to take off uh, the guys that are by your base, then you go into their base and cap before they do. Uh, if for whatever reason they decide to just sit on the hill and in the back here, the way to dig it out is with your EBR. This is one of those uh, matches where it's extremely important for your light tank to not die. If you can kill the enemy team's light tank on this map while keeping yours alive, then it's pretty impossible for any camp to work against you because this entire mid is bushes. You can just send a light tank all the way up through the mid, through all the bushes and spot everything that's by their base. So yeah, that is the north side. All right, and south side is pretty much the exact same thing with some very slight changes. The Progettos are the exact same job. The Barasks are the exact same job from the other side. Uh, what's important about this spawn is that you have to make sure that you go wide with the Barasks and not to the corner. The reason for that is if you go wide, it's easier to get out and faster to get out. And you can spot them just the same from over here than as you can from right here. Um, the Skodas, it's important to make sure that they can start on the corner, but eventually they're going to want to pull back to here. The reason for that is if the enemy team takes this area right here, then they will be able to fire into tanks that are all the way up here. So it's safer to play back here. 
and then they'll have to come from either side in order to kill them. The 7032 is able to support from the front. Of course, you can use any other heavy tank for this. It's not really all that important. I left the Skodas up here due to their gun depression. The ship poke is looking north just in case that's important. If it's not important, then the ship poke can come back and start focusing south again. It can also stay over here and get this in a crossfire here. It's kind of hard to do this because they have the inside ridge to stay safe in. Uh, this EBR should be here. I don't know why it was all the way out there. Uh, this EBR has got the exact same job. Spots from a bush in the middle here into anything that tries to go hill. Progetto here will spot the crossing so that if they put too many tanks up north, you can run away. Usually you'll spot one of their light tanks early for this and you can clip them out. Then the Progettos will be pushing this. The Barasks will eventually come back and go all the way back up to join the push up north. If you guys win the north side, then you can win by that way. If you don't win the north side and it becomes a standstill with you controlling north and then controlling south, then all you do is you fire in um, at anything that the light tank spots. Make sure that you keep your light tank alive. This map is very important for that. If you see that the enemy team is not as powerful as you and you want to take south for whatever reason, um, I'll go over real quick how to win south. All you do is you send your entire team there. Uh, you make sure that the Brasks go all the way through into the opposite corner. So if you're from the north side, you would go to here. If you're from the south side, you would go to here. Your Progettos would stick to the corner here because they are not quite as fast as the Brasks and that would create a crossfire for anything that's over here. The ship poke plays on the bush over here and then the heavy tanks play on the corner here. If they need to, if you need to push in to help, like if the enemy team pushes everything in, then you would just send your heavy tanks in with. You can send one of your heavy tanks wide. And that is it. The, the The reason I don't really explain this outside is because it's extremely easy to play it. If you want to, you just send your entire team in. So for Live Oaks, it is, this is a map that's very similar to tier six for me, because at everything besides tier 10, I like to play full north. Um, the EBR is very optional. If you have two light tanks, this is a very good map to have two light tanks on because you would split them. One would go south and the other one would play up north. Um, if you don't have two light tanks, then I would probably send that tank south and use your Barasks or whatever your fast mediums are as your other light tank. Um, I send my fast medium tanks that I can spare over to the edge of the buildings here. They will shoot and spot anything that tries to cross this open area here. You have one DPM medium as well as the TD playing on this back ridge here to fire into this. What's very important is that they often send a light tank in through like this. That is not these guys on the ridge job. That is this tank here. This tank here is the one that counters any light tank that pushes like this. If these guys try to take shots at that guy, then all they're gonna do is shoot the crap out of them with anything that they have back here. It is a very obvious trap. Don't fall for it. Um, the EBR back here will spot anything that goes south if they decide to go full south, which is a terrible idea. Um, but if they do, then you will know way ahead of time. And then because you know way ahead of time, all you have to do is take literally your entire team and push their base. And I mean a direct push through their base. So the heavy tanks that are out wide here will just go through the city wide and go straight below to behind the hill here. If they've already made it to this point in the map here, then all you do is you take all of your tanks straight down the line here. You will eventually want some tanks to take over this building here, but it's safer to take the wide side first if they have tanks back out here. Once you take out everything that is at their base, you cap and then you win. If the enemy team is pushing through like this and you're afraid of them capping, it's very easy to deal with. All you do is you move your Progetto away. So now you have three tanks on this ridge here. If you want to, you can bring one of them out here. If you want to, you can bring one of them with the rest of the push. That's usually what I do. I bring the Progetto that starts off back here with the rest of the push, and I bring the Progetto that starts off here to stay with the ship poke. If you have two tanks here, then they can reset for as long as you want to um, until they die. But that should be plenty of time for you to be able to get to their cap. All you do is you put three on cap, and then the rest push through. Um, that's a very important point. Only three on cap. Don't put more than three people on cap. Uh, as soon as the rest push through, they kill anything that tries to go back and reset, and you win. Again, make sure that you control this, because this can crossfire anything that tries to push back across this way. And that is north side. Alright, so for south spawn, I did tell you guys that pushing south is a terrible idea, but we're going to do it correctly. Um, the way to do south push correctly is that you prioritize your base defense, because if, you, if the enemy team goes for cap, they're going to cap before you do, just because the south cap is easier to cap than the north cap. Um, so if the enemy team tries to do what we were doing the last route, where they push into base, you have to make absolutely sure that you prioritize base defense rather than capping, because if you try to cap, it's not going to work. Uh, the ship poke starts off here. This ship poke can shoot at anything that the Barasks spot out here. 
The Barasks will spot as soon as they realize that they're going to die if they stay there, then they just leave. Uh, the Barasks leave completely. You do not take this dip. There's no point in taking this dip. You take all the way back here. The tanks over on the south side, meanwhile. Uh, the shipboat should leave as well, I should specify. You don't want anything farther than this building area here. The EBR is passive in mid. This is an extremely optional thing. It's better to do this with a light tank that's more preferably passive in mid, but I, I will often see that people uh, don't really expect an EBR to be passive in mid, because it's not really a great idea. But passive in mid allows you to spot them as they play on the outside ridge here, which is super useful. It is a high risk to put your EBR there, especially because they are committed to that spot. If you don't want to put your EBR there, then you can send them this way. I wouldn't send them north, but you can if you really want to get knowledge on what they have north. I, I wouldn't. I would send it south. Um, so anyway, that's the EBR. Now let's talk about how the main team is going to be rotating. So we already talked about how as soon as the north side looks like it's under threat, then we leave with our faster tanks that can get away from it. From the south side, what we want to do is make sure that we are playing aggressively with the Skodas as long as the enemy team does not have enough tanks here to beat us. That's why I would send the EBR south if you want to play it safe, so that you can see ahead of time whether or not you're going to get wrecked for trying to take these areas. Um, here is the main end goal. The 7032 is a little bit difficult to play on this map just because of the lack of gun depression. If you really want to, you can leave him back here and have him play base defense. As for the rest of the team, you want the Skodas to take over to here. As soon as you have control over that area here, there is a very specific rotation that you want to do, which is you want to take your tanks through like this. If you still have an EBR, let the EBR do that. If you don't have the EBR, then projectors are perfectly sufficient. All you do is you take in like that, play below this area here, spot anything out that they have defending their base from that side, and then destroy them with the Skodas. If they're being smart, like we were on the other side of the map, and they have their tanks set up here, and they've abandoned north pretty much entirely, then all you do is you take as far as you can along the outside, see if you can spot them there. If you can't, then you send your Skodas up like this. The Skodas from here should be able to see them and shoot into them. If they still cannot for whatever reason, then you just play in these areas until one of them makes a mistake and you can shoot into them. The extra Progetto here, because you only really need two to do this move here, the extra Progetto can play Mediator and start shooting back at base if need be. Again, if they push base, then all you would do is you you don't push your projectors like that. You bring your projectors to this ridge here. You shoot across as they cross this giant wide open area here. The EBR, if he's passive in mid, would spot anything playing on the outside. If the EBR is not passive in mid, then you would use the EBR spotting along these areas here for the projectors. Make sure that you're doing as much damage as possible here. And as long as you have enough tanks that are back in the first place, especially if you brought your 703 back to side scrape off of this angle uh, from the get go, then you should be absolutely fine. You can even bring your Barasks through because they're not even that great at uh, base defense. You can bring your Barasks through to start pressuring their cap while you're defending your cap. Just make sure that defending your cap is your priority on this map from this spawn. All right, so Malinovka is simultaneously one of the least and most complicated maps. It is the least complicated map because Hill wins. You want to send everything that you can spare towards Hill so that you have that map control. As soon as you have that map control, it's very easy to move around so that you can win the rest of the map. Simultaneously, it's extremely hard uh, and complicated because against good teams, good teams will play extremely quickly on this map. They will push very aggressively in different locations at the same time. They'll completely avoid Hill most of the time, except with maybe two tanks. And because of that, they'll make inexperienced college panic because they'll see tanks coming from every single direction. The way to counter this, there is really no definite way to counter this, but the easiest way for newer callers to counter this is going to be um, knowing where they're coming from before they make their move. In order to do this, I send my faster tanks out to certain spotting locations so that I can see where the majority of their team is going. Again, this is more important against good teams um, but better safe than sorry, you, you never know. So the EBR will spot here. What this will do is it'll spot most of the tanks that try to push hill from their team. It'll also let you know if you're not going to be able to win hill, if they send literally their entire team towards hill. If they do so, then you can send your Barask up like this, and then have the Barask start shooting from behind like this. Um, you can also bring your Progettos back if you think it's a complete lost cause, and then you can push south with the other Barask as well, and take map control from them. Uh, you will possibly lose your heavies, but eh, so be it. Hopefully they'll do enough damage to make it worth it. If they do not do that, 
then what you do is you just take hill with your projectors and your heavies. The ship poke back here is going to be supporting their bar the barask that's back here. Again, make sure that your barask knows that if he sees a bunch of things coming after him, uh, then he or she should leave that spot. There's no reason to stay in that spot besides to spot the giant push that's coming. If the giant push is coming, then don't stay there and try to take it with your face. The ship poke can start uh, firing into them from here. Eventually, the shipboat can pull back into these ridges here. The Barras can take over his spot for him if he wants to. Make sure that he gets spots across. If they cap, then you can just blind fire the bushes in the cap. It's very easy to reset cap. Uh, by this point, you should have taken over hill. The hill can push in like this. The only other thing that I want to talk about is if the enemy team, for some reason, is trying to camp the hill after you've taken hill. The way to counter this, if you still have an EBR, then you can send your EBR in to kill itself while everything's watching. And you can probably kill two or three tanks in exchange for a single EBR's life. If you don't want to take the violent suicide route, then what you can do instead is take your progenitors over the ridge like this. Very important that you drop off on that ridge there. Meanwhile, the heavy tanks are going to line up on the edge like this. You're going to have your Barask take all the way up to here, or you can play on this ridge here. You can have your ship poke play up to here. The other Barask down here is still kind of emergency just in case they push south. The Progettos eventually want to go follow this path here, and then take the low like this. Once they play in these ridges here, as soon as something fires from this area, it'll get spotted. Um, and everything on the hill can obliterate it. Again, if you can't dig them out from this position for whatever reason, then it might be time to use your EBR as a suicidal light tank. And that is it. North side, it's the exact same thing. I'm not going to really go too in-depth with it. Uh, just to specify how the hill fight will work, the mediums will get there first. Pretty much whatever team takes to the lighthouse first with their heavies wins, not the mediums. Whoever takes it with the heavies first wins. So your medium's job is to keep them from getting up there until your heavies can get up there and take the lighthouse uh, windmill thing. Whatever. The building that's up there. You know what I mean. And that is it. And if you see good teams playing aggressively from any other angle, just make sure that you adjust in time. And yep. All right. Mannerheim line. This is an interesting map. Mannerheim line, this setup is pretty consistent no matter what. The EBR will be running with the Barasks like this. It'll spot anything that's crossing to the north side here, which is usually the fight that wins this map. The Barasks and the Progettos that are stopped here will be able to put one clip into them. As they cross this, make sure that you hit your shots. As soon as that happens, the Barasks should leave. As soon as that clip is out, they should leave. And then they have a couple options. You can bring them wherever you want to. If you want to push north with everything, if you think that they don't have enough to threaten you from up there, then you just bring all of your heavy tanks and stuff up there with you. Um, if they have too much north, then you would bring your Progettos back. You can even push south if you wanted to with Tier 8. It's technically possible. I don't often do it because uh, south is usually a bad idea. But you can. I don't really want to get into too, uh, too in-depth with all the rotations you could do. But the heavy tanks should be staggered like this. Um... You should always have a tank back here in this dip, unless you are hard pushing. From here, it can counter anything that tries to poke on this ridge here, and it can also put in shots in anything that overpokes the 7032. This Skoda back here is the exact same thing. And the ship poke from here shoots across the way. And rotations are self-explanatory. If you want to, you can take all of your medium tanks and push south. If you don't want to, then you can take all of your medium tanks and push north. If you don't want to do either of those things and want to play it slow, then, you know, play it slow. From the north spawn, I usually play full north. Do you have to? No. Uh, you could technically play slow and have your Progettos playing back here, and then eventually they'll push through the south side. I don't really like doing that. Um, the ship poke is up here just because if they push south, then there's a Barask that's passive spotting here in a similar spot to what you would use at tier 6. It's a very good light tank spot. If you play from this spot here, then the ship poke will be able to shoot anything that it spots crossing this area here. The EBR runs through like this and plays below this ridge. This is to spot anything that they put over here as well as anything that they put over here. You will probably take some damage crossing this. That's just how it works with the heavy tanks. Uh, the EBR will hopefully be able to counter most of it. Again, this projecto should be here. This projecto here is the only thing that's really able to support the EBR, um, which is fine. It's really over there. It's really not that important to get spotting damage off early uh, from the north spawn. Once you take up here, it's pretty much up to you. You can push hard north if you want to. You don't have to commit all the mediums up here. Like I said, you could keep some of them back, and then you could push in later if you want to, or you could push south. Really, really, really up to you. And that is Mannerheim Light. Oh yeah, quick addendum. If you want to break a camp on this map, um, 
my tier 6 stronghold video, I already talked about this. If you're from the south side pushing into the north side, then it's easier on this map to drain as much of their health as possible. Make sure that you blind fire whatever they have in the corner back here. Um, and then eventually you will be able to do enough damage to push in. If you are not able to do enough damage from a distance to be able to push in eventually, then uh, you're kind of fucked. This, this map is really, really bad for camping. You're just going to have to shoot better than they do. My tier 6 solution is to push all of my fast tanks straight over and take into this corner here. You can technically do that with your mediums on this map. It depends on how badly the enemy team sets up their camp. If they're camping from the south side, then all that you have to do is take this spot here first. As soon as you take this spot in the south corner here, this guy can counter anything that they have on the ridge line over here. Um, and then you play the rest of the map. So you can have your Skoda over here, you can have the other Skoda here or whatever. 703 can be over here. You know what I mean. Just take the spots, incrementally get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and then take out everything that's camping. South side is a bit easier to break. North side is terrible. Um, if you camp on north side on Mannerheim line, you're a jerk. But I understand why you do it, because it's, it's pretty easy to win it. Mines, south, take mid. Heavy's mid, medium's mid, EBR mid, take mid, win from mid. Good game. More mines, this time for north, mid. Take mid, win mid, medium's mid, heavy's mid, TD back, win, game, good game. Unlike mines, Muravanka is way more complicated just because there are so many things that you can do depending on what the enemy team brings as their lineup. This starting setup is the easiest one to do. Um, let me adjust really quick. So if you want to, this is the starting setup that you can just do, and then you can adjust from there. This is the easiest way to set up because this will counter most plays. However, this is not the most consistent way to win because it does not take into account what the enemy team is bringing. On this map especially, it is super important to figure out what the enemy team is bringing. If you can win easily in the 8-9-0 line, then take your entire team there. Take literally everything over there. You can keep your EBR over here if you really want to, but everything can win at the 8-9-0 line. Then that'll be game over. You would just bring your ship poke over here. You would have the medium tanks go over there. That's self-explanatory. If you cannot win over that line, or if it's going to be a close fight for whatever reason, you can still bring your heavy tanks up. I would keep one of them back just in case. You can have your medium tanks up there if you want to. You can bring your projectos over. Um, and then have one extra Brigitte play in the back if you want to, but really the ship poke should be able to do that well enough. There are two different things that you can do from this strat if you want to adjust. One is you could swap the EBR and the Barasks places. This would be to kill an enemy light tank very early on in the game. You can do this from the north side as well, so keep that in mind while I'm explaining this. Uh, the Barasks that are over here can be your light tank assassins. They can kill whatever light tank is sent here in the beginning of the game, or at least severely damage him without having to overpoke too much, because if they overpoke too much, then they would get hit by enemy tanks. You would play closer to this building than anything else, or closer to here. You take out the enemy light tank, and then you leave. So that is one tank down from the beginning of the game, if you see that as an opening. If that is not the clear opening, and you want to stick with the EBR over here, the Barasks over here, their job is to do the exact same thing. If the enemy team brings a light tank over here, then it kill they kill it. If the enemy team fully commits to the 890 line, which is a fair strategy. A lot of teams like to do that. If they do that, then your Barasks do not stop driving. They drive all the way through. The faster this fight is going, the more direct these guys have to be. If this fight is going fairly slowly, then they can park themselves back over here. You don't want to cap. Uh, they can park themselves back over here and farm into anything that's back here, playing on the ridge lines. If the fight over here is not going well, then they would turn directly and start participating. The Barasks job on this map, if you want to be sneaky with the Barasks, is to kill the enemy light tank, and then they can move over. But yes, so that is the slightly more complicated method of doing things. Uh, you can also adjust if you want to. If you're playing defensively over here with the heavy tanks back here like this, then you can have one of your heavy tanks that has impenetrable turret armor, in this case the 7032, can play over there, while you have the rest of your team spread out as you see fit. That is an adjustment you are allowed to do. This spread out of your tanks right here, or the one that I showed in the beginning, is probably your get out of jail free card. If you don't want to think too much, you can just have them set up like this, and then you can adjust as you see fit. But 
if you want slightly more complicated things that you adjust depending on what the enemy team is bringing, then do the modifications that I talked about earlier. And from the north side of Muravanka, it's even easier to take out the enemy light tank from here. So if you can, do it, because it is extraordinarily easy from the north side. The Progetto should be playing on the outside here, just in case they have to support the Barasks, and they can also get anything that plays here in a crossfire. And then your heavy tanks will play all the way to this ridge eventually, with the ship folks supporting from the back. And then this EBR is checking out this side. If he has no competition, he can go around and start farming from the back for free. All right, so Prokhorovka is very nearly identical to what I do at tier six, which is I keep a couple tanks back here, your 7032 and the ship folk. You guys have your limit as this bend. This bend in the path here is the limit to how far they can go up. Uh, the progenitors back here are reserves. Whatever side you need to move them to, you move them to. The Skoda here is just to hold this area here. This Skoda here is to proxy spot anything that tries to push up this way, as well as just hold the ridge here. The EBR does a very specific spotting run. He goes over the ridge like this. Not as important to see this area, more important to see this area here. You want to know if they push the 6-7 line. If they push the 6-7 line with enough tanks to the point where you cannot hold them with your five medium tanks that are here, which is often what's going to happen if they try to play 6-7 line at all, then you completely leave this side. There is no reason to try to hold the 6-7 line, and there's no reason to try to farm them as they approach the 6-7 line. Just bring everything out immediately. As soon as they are out, you take all the way up the 1-2 line with all of your medium tanks like that. <clears throat> you can even have your EBR go over and clear it. You can leave one of the progenitors over here as bait if you want to. If you can escape with all of them, I would. It's really not that worth it to leave something as bait. Take the 1-2 line in its entirety, play on the ridge line here, have the Skoda play up to here, have the 7032 join him. Make sure that you control all of this, and then once you control all of the 1-2 line, then you can start worrying about countering them on the 6-7 line. Um, the 1-2 line is typically more advantaged than the 6-7 line. The only risk that you have is if they play hill. If they play hill, capping is a terrible idea. I say this in my tier 6 guide, I will also say it in the tier 8 guide. Capping on this map is a terrible idea, do not do it. Instead, to counter if they have hill, all you would do is you would send your medium tanks north. The medium tanks that are north would be able to push over, push over into this area here, because once you control the 1-2 line and they control the 6-7 line, what they're going to be doing is spreading out their team all the way along the ridge here, because they have to. It's easier to take over the north side than it is to take over the south side just because of hill. Once you take over that, then you can push into hill while you have some heavy tanks here, maybe. Playing support in the mid. And at this point, you would have your ship poke down south to make sure that you're countering anything that they have south. And if you need to leave a medium tank down there, you can do that as well. And that is it for the north side. Uh, a couple things I forgot to mention for the north side rotation. Uh, if the enemy team does not have tanks down the 6-7 line, and they are not rushing the 1-2 line, then you would take your Barasks up the 9-0 line. You can decide whether or not you want to send your Progetos with them. If the enemy team does not have anything down the 6-7 line and it decides to rush the 1-2 line, then if you notice it fast enough, you can bring your Progetos across and take into here. If you don't notice it fast enough, then you're not going to have any choice but to farm as much as possible with the Progetos from the side while you bring your Skodas over like this to stay safe, and it turns into a 6-7 line fight. You don't want this to happen, if possible, you want to bring your progenitors over fast enough. But if it's not possible, then so be it. It's going to be a harder fight. South side's very similar, but you're playing aggressively with your mediums. The EBR does the exact same spotting run, checks out if they have anything 6-7 line. The 7032 is in the corner over here, so that if they push up this line, it takes longer for them to dig it out. And the ship poke is here for the same reason over here. This Skoda should probably be here. You can leave it here if you want to do the exact same roll that you did on the other side. But it's a higher risk because you cannot rotate your mediums back to help. Um, instead, you can leave them back here. The Progettos that are here uh, should be playing aggressively. You want to take up the entire 6-7 line if you can. The EBR would have already seen if there's anything back there that you cannot win against. If that is the case, then you would do the exact same thing. You would leave and you would go take 1-2. If the enemy does not have enough to threaten you, then you would take all the way up the 6-7 line. And because you are smart and you have some tanks that are in these areas and the areas back, at the, back of the 1-2 line, then you have more map control than the enemy team. If the enemy team does the smart thing and decides to counter your 6-7 line push by taking up the 1-2 line, then these Skodas here are potentially going to die because they are in the open if the enemy team takes the south corner here. If they start to do that, then you bring your Skodas over the ridge like this. So once the enemy team takes far enough down the 1-2 line, you swap 
map sides with them and you take the Skodas over the ridge while they're focusing on anything you have in the back corner here. If the ship poke can escape, then they should try to escape, but because you only have one light tank and you spent them looking at the 6-7 line, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to escape with the ship poke. Once the EBR does this run here, you should probably be bringing him back to the 1-2 line just so he can help as much as possible. Because right now you really only have your 7-3-2 spotting, which is not good enough. All right, so for Redshire, I like to take Castle with the heavy tanks just because I think that is the most important part of the map. I like to play my Progettos on the ridge line here. They can rotate anywhere if need be. The ship poke is playing back here just in case the enemy team tries to overplay over here. The other risk that the enemy team might do is they might play on the outside of the ridge along this area here. If they do that, that's why you have Barasks over on the other side of the map to farm into them, while the EBR is spotting the far ridge here. The reason you want your EBR over here and not over here is because if the enemy team decides to play aggro up the 9-0 line with medium tanks that can kill your Barasks, then you want to leave with your Barasks. If the entire enemy team is up the 9-0 line and they completely abandoned this side, then funny enough, you actually want to leave your Barasks here and bring your ship poke. Oh, I'm never going to be able to get that back, am I? Aha! And bring your ship poke down south with your Progettos lining up on the ridge here to farm across. The reason for this is because if they fully committed to the 9-0 line, then you can play bait with your Barasks down this ridge here. The only way to kill this ridge is by fully poking either this way or going straight across to the point where you can finally get shots into these guys. Once they do finally get shots into these guys, you should be farming with literally everything to the point where it should trade out so that it's worthwhile to lose two Barasks for this. Um, the EBR can, of course, leave, or it can set up passive back here if you want it to. In the meantime, your heavy tanks would have taken Castle. If you need to, you can spend one Progetto to take all the way up here. Uh, but again, if you're able to leave Barask back here, you shouldn't. If they split their team and have enough tanks over here to kill whatever Barasks you have over here, while simultaneously having some tanks to hold the 3-4 line, then what you want to do is prioritize taking the 3-4 line and abandoning the 9-0 line. There's really no point in leaving Barasks here. The reason you put them out there is because they're fast enough to get away. You bring your Barasks back, you kill everything that's over on the 3-4 line, and then you should win the game like that. Other side of the map, very similar. I'm not creative. The only thing that you can change really is if you want to, you can bring your Barasks to this ridge here to farm anything that tries to go castle off the beginning. And if you really want to play defensively, you can bring your ship poke to here. I wouldn't do that unless you're spending all of your mediums to the 9-0 line. And that is it. Ruinburg. This is one of my favorite maps. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You take field with all of your mediums. If you have an overwhelming advantage with your mediums, then you play wider to the zero line in order to kill the enemy team. So you take all the way up to here, play the backsides of these buildings here, and then farm into anything that they have here. In the meantime, you can push across with projectos like this. Uh, up to you how you win it, but you should be winning the 8-9-0 line. If you don't think you have enough mediums for the job, you can even bring a uh, heavy or two over there. They would just have to go wide, and then they take up the line, and eventually they'll be able to win that side for your team. If not, though, the heavy tanks can play here. They counter anything that tries to push through the mid, up the 5-6 line. And that is it. Ruinburg is fairly self-explanatory. If they cap or go through city for whatever reason, then you farm them from the mid like this while the EBR can spot. And then the uh, tanks that need to be able to go back and reset cap can go back and reset cap while the medium tanks that are fast enough just go straight through take over their base nice and easy let's talk about the other side pretty much the same exact thing from the north side your medium tanks would play through the 9-0 line you'd have one heavy tank park behind here because now you have a building here it's very sweet of wargaming to make the maps a little bit more fair you can have one or two skodos back in this ridge here just in case if you think you're going to lose the zero line if you are fully confident that you will win the 9-0 line, I don't really know why you would be, but if you are, and also if you want to play City, because it's always been a part of your dreams, you can send your heavy tanks here. Is this a good idea? No. Um, would I do it? Probably not. Uh, I don't know why you would want to do it, but if you do want to do it, you can. Um, the reason I say it's not a good idea is because if the enemy team decides to go City, these will die. Uh, you cannot save the Skodas once they go there, or whatever heavy tanks that uh, you send there. The reason for this is because there's no way to try to control city without completely overextending in city. So, it will die. If you want to, you can try tryharding and staggering your tanks like this, but then they're not going to have a purpose in city anyway. Just do yourself a favor, send them field. Uh, if you really want to play them city, then they would have to take a risk and play all the way through to here in order to be useful. Uh, really not worth it, unless you're at tier 10. But if you really want to do it, then go ahead. So here's what I like doing 
at least recently with my starting uh, positions on Sand River. Is this necessarily what you have to do? Definitely not. You really do not need this many tanks to take north side. There's really not this a point to leave this many tanks on north side. I do it because I don't really have any other purpose for them early game. Uh, so I figure I might as well go big or go home on north side. Uh, the two heavy tanks down south are just to hold south. If the EBR lights a bunch of stuff over here, then you can send your Brigitto back to help. And the Skoda here can take over the midline here. The Progettos here obliterate whatever goes here. If you really want to, uh, which is another thing that I like doing on this map, you can send your Barasks like this, have your Progettos play south reserve. You can have them even play over here if you want to, and then have a Progetto play here. If you have different amounts of mediums, then you might be able to do this a little bit more consistently. But your fast mediums would go to this ridge here and obliterate their light tank. If they send a light tank here, you just YOLO your Barasks over, kill the light tank, and then go back. Um, this is one of those maps where light tank assassination is pretty early, uh, pretty easy early on. The EBR goes south to see if they have too many tanks down south. If you want to, the way to YOLO this map would be to send literally everything south, except for probably your Barasks. Uh, your Barasks would stay north, do the light tank assassination, and then eventually they would run away. The ship book would be able to support them if need be. You can have the Barasks go and... Uh, stay with the rest of the team that's yellowing south. The team that's yellowing south would just push straight over. They would push over this ridge like this, go through, take out anything that's in the south corner. I'm not going to spend my time moving all the figures over, you can imagine. Take all of your tanks, move up like this, have half of them go over the ridge, have half of them go around the ridge, kill everything at their base, yada yada. Uh, that is the Zerg rush plan. If you don't want to do the Zerg rush plan, you can do what I put as the starting lineup loadout and then you can have whatever fluctuations you want from that as you go. Very similar from the west side. All you do is you send your EBR south, make sure that they don't have an incredible army coming that way. If they do, then you're going to have to adjust quickly. In this case, I wouldn't even try to hold off the south push. I would just take all of your medium tanks and push north. The Progettos, in order to get there, go around like this so that you don't get spotted. Play reserve here until you're absolutely sure that you're able to do some damage by pushing in like this. The Barasks are bait. You're able to kill their light tank if the enemy light tank is stupid. If the enemy light tank is not stupid, they should at least spot what's pushing up north. If it's too much, you're going to have to escape with the Brasks. Most of the time, it's not going to be too much, and you can send, send your Progettos in after the enemy team commits. You send your Progettos in, kill whatever the enemy team has over there, and then you should have the uh, advantage for the rest of the game by taking out whatever they have over here, while the heavy tanks down south just hold. Steps is one of those maps where I really wouldn't ever change what my original setup was unless the enemy team is bringing something ridiculous or the players on the enemy team are somewhat ridiculous. Uh, if those two requirements are not met, I would pretty much do this every single time. This is pretty easy to adjust from. The Progettos that are playing here are to shoot any light tank that's dumb enough to try to active spot in here. They should get obliterated, especially with the help of this Barask. If the Barask doesn't see anything for any reason, then I would spend the Progettos clipping out this area here, this bush. Uh, just make sure that they fire all at the same time so that you can get some blind shots into their light tank and then pull back off the ridge before you get countered. This Barask here is to spot anything that tries to cross out like this. Meanwhile, the 7032 here will hold off this area here. The Skoda here will support either side as need be, and this Skoda here will play this ridge line and shoot at whatever the enemy of our EBR lights, especially if they have anything on this back ridge here. If you need to adjust, easier to push down the 8-9 line. Uh, if absolutely necessary, you can push down the 1-2 line, but I, I would try to push down 8 line first, if at all possible. And this Barask here just spots mid passive, and you can move them as need be. And that is it. Alright, so on the south side, it's a little bit different. We're going to use our EBR to passive in mid for now, because we kind of want the Barasks in the positions that we have them. This Barask here is to put in clips to whatever tries to push aggressively out this way, and then leave. The 7032 here is just to defend from this side. The Skodas here are to get anything that pushes up the 8-9 line aggressively in a crossfire. I don't know why that guy was over there. I'm just going to avoid that. Uh, the Progettos and the Shipbook here are going to fire at anything that the EBR spots. If you want to, pushing up the 9-0 line is the easier way to go. Um, this is a very responsive strat. You don't really need the extra Progetto here. This Barask here is to spot anything that pushes out this way. If the Barask notices that he's fucked, try to get away with the Barask. The Barask is probably one of the only tanks that can get away with it. Just make sure that he's unspotted before he tries to run. And then once he runs, he just runs through the ridge lines here. And that should be it for steps. Hey, we're on the last one, Westfield. Thankfully, it's a very simple one. 
Uh, I try to never, ever play north. The only time I really would is if the enemy team... Nah, it's tier 8. Never, never play north. <laughs> uh, instead, focus on south, take over south, have the heavy tanks make a beeline to this ridge here and start playing below here as soon as you've taken over south. Play aggressively through south, take over all of south. Um, and that's it from the south spot. And oh look, from the north spawn, it's the same thing. Take over south, have your heavy tanks make a beeline over to here, play below the ridge, make sure that you have complete control over south, and then you can fight whatever's left. And that's it. And that is it. That is all of the different maps that are available, at least in the current rotation, and some that were previously available in rotations, for Tier 8 Strongholds. I wish you guys the best of luck in calling your Tier 8 Strongholds games, and hopefully I'll be able to play against you. Until then, happy tanking.